from Faith Christian Center to our Tuesday fireside chat and anybody else that may be joining us. This is a beautiful day. The sun is out. You can feel spring in the air. And this is the day the Lord has made. Whether the sun's out or not, I will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to speak to you again today about our words and how important our words are. And I really don't think many Christians understand how critical our words are. And yet the Bible says an awful lot about our words. It says we're snared by the words of our tongue. It says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Our tongue has great power. And it's not just the power to discourage people or encourage people. It does have that. But there's a spiritual force and power behind our words. Jesus only spoke what he heard his father speak. And as the centurion uh, uh, recognized in, in Matthew chapter 8, Jesus spoke with absolute authority. So when we speak God's word about a situation, literally the authority of God is behind those words if we speak those words out of our heart and we believe those words. Now I want to give you uh, some information today that I discovered several years ago that scientists are beginning to discover what the Bible said all along, that there literally is power in your words that can change physical things. Again, Jesus spoke to things. He spoke to storms. He spoke to blind eyes. He spoke to a man who had been buried in his grave for four days, and he spoke to him to come forth. He didn't ask God to bring him forth. He spoke to Lazarus' body to come out of that grave and to be alive again. And we need to speak to situations, not just pray over them, but to speak to them. That's what the Bible says to do. It says in Romans 4, God calls things that be not as though they were. And Abraham walked in that same kind of faith. Well, we need to be walking in the steps of Abraham. That's what Romans 4, Romans 4 says. But I want to make you aware of this scientific study that came out a number of years ago by a Japanese secular scientist. This is not a Christian. This is not a man who reads his Bible. This is a man who just decided to try something and discover something. This is Dr. Masura Emoto, a Japanese scientist. And he discovered that, that words had an effect on the molecular structure of water. And what he would do is he would take water, he would speak words over those water. He would also pray over the water. And he found that when he took water that had, when frozen, had deformed crystals, and he spoke positive words over those, he spoke life words over those, the crystal structure, the molecular crystal structure of that water began to change. And in the book he wrote, he got pictures of the differences of this water by the words he spoke over them. It was also the music that was played over. So literally our words affect the molecular structure of water. Now, isn't that interesting when you realize that your body is made up of something like 60 or 70 percent water? Your cells are made up of water as well as other molecules. And when we can, if, if changing the molecular structure of water in a glass or a petri dish can do that. Imagine what the water, the molecular structure in your body, how that's affected by your words. So when you say words like, I don't know, I think everybody's going to get sick, I'm going to get sick, I always get the flu, or this thing's happening, I'm going to get it, or I'm in the endangered, I'm in the endangered age group, those words are literally affecting your mind and your body. I mentioned to you yesterday, I think it was, or maybe it was last week, I don't know, some message I preached lately, that they've done scientific studies of, of how your words affect the enzymes that are released in your body through your brain. So literally, when you speak words of life, it's affecting the enzymes that your body releases. So there's physical impact of your words. Several years ago, I heard a, of, a, of a young boy that was raised in a, in a church, in his family that believed God's word and spoke God's word. And his science project in his Christian school, his parents came up with this idea that they were going to prove the power of words. So he planted two different seeds. One seed he plot, planted in a pot, another seed from the same source in another pot, treated them the same way, watered them, put them both in the light, treated, fertilized them, did everything the same. And over one, he spoke words of life. You will live and not die. You will prosper. You will bear fruit. On the other, he spoke words of death. You're going to die. You're never. And what happened is after several weeks, nothing seemed to change. 
But gradually as these plants grew, the plant he spoke words of life over grew strong and prospered and produced fruit, and the other was weak, never produced fruit. And the interesting thing is, by the way, he won, he won the first place in the science fair. The interesting thing is, months later, his mother took those plants and put them on a shelf behind some books, forgot about them. And when they found them months later, they pulled them out. The plant that he had spoken life over was still flourishing. The plant that he spoke death over had died. I'm telling you, my friends, your words have power. So what are you speaking over your life today? What are you speaking about this COVID-19 virus? I can tell you one thing you can speak, Psalm 91. Speak that over yourself every day. And as you go throughout the day, even parts of it, this will not come near my dwelling. Though a thousand may fall at my right and 10,000 my left, it will not come near me. I'm telling you, those are not idle words. Those are the words of God. So just want to encourage you with that. I've gone a little longer than usual today, but I think these are words we need to hear. God bless you. As we begin to apply these in our life, we'll see the power of God work. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, blessed day, and we'll see you tomorrow morning.